What's good? We back. It's your boy CJ Goodfellow back with the boxing clinic and more. And um, you know, Bob Arum says uh, you know, Terrence Crawford, and Earl Spence is, is a big pay per view fight over in the U.S. He says um, you know, he's open to you know t- matching Terrence Crawford if he gets a welterweight title, which would be Jeff Horn's WBO title against any and, and all you know PBC Al Hammond fighters. And um, you know, it's funny how you know things could switch. Um, you know, first, you know, he wasn't willing to work with Al. Him and Oscar was trying to gangbang and sue him up. You know, Al beat the case. Oscar is trying to appeal his, his, his lawsuit, which ain't going to fly. Um, so the Harvard connection lives on between Al Hammond and Bob Arum. As a part of their agreement, you know, with his failed lawsuit and Bob Arum, you know, he said he would agree. And Al Hammond basically said he would agree to work with Bob Arum to make some of these fights and make boxing great again. And this is the fight Bob Aaron wants. You know, he's been talking about Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford for quite some time. And one of the reasons why is, you know, possibly one of his fighters, Constantine, Constantine Pulmov, is fighting Carlos Ocampo very soon. And if he beats Carlos Ocampo, um, he will become Earl Spence's mandatory. So um, that's something to look out for. So he has to do business with, with Al Hamer regardless because his guy's the mandatory. And I'm pretty sure I, Bob Aaron and nobody else is putting big money up for pull him off to win a purse bid, and it's going to be on Earl Spence's uh, terms regardless um, because, you know, Al got the money to get the, the purse bid and willing to deep, dig in his pockets to win that purse bid. So they might can work out a two-fight deal, you know, um, you know, which may have Earl Spence fighting on ESPN versus pull him off and then Terrence Crawford coming on regular CBS or Showtime to, white, to fight Earl Spence. But Terrence Crawford first has to win versus um, Jeff Horn. I know most people look at it as a gimme. Um, and I do too, you know, as long as it's not in Australia, then um, I believe, you know, Terrence Crawford to beat the piss out of Jeff Horn. But um, it's funny how Bob Aram's willingness to make Earl Spence versus Terrence Crawford rather than talk about Keith Thurman. Maybe Bob Aram knows it's a foregone conclusion that Earl Spence will beat Keith Thurman. Like a lot of people t- tend to assume that. I think Terrence Crawford thinks differently. Terrence Crawford wants Keith Thurman, but Terrence Crawford has to understand that Keith is, is injured, and he's not jumping the line. He is not getting the Keith Thurman fight before Earl Spence. Not going to happen unless Earl Spence falls, hurts himself, or falls to the hand of defeat by some other welterweight or some other fashion. That's the only way it's going to happen. He's going to have to go through the process. And they said they open the fight in all of them. Danny Garcia, um, you know, uh, Keith, Terrence, Sean. I mean, I think Sean would be a terrible fight for, for Terrence Crawford. Um on his first fight with P- PBC, just because how how reckless and you know how hard he fights, he's gonna end up getting cut over the eye. He's gonna be out a while, but um, I think stylistically, that's one of the more tougher fights, you know, outside of uh, Earl and Keith for Terence Crawford because of, of Sean's reckless style, you know, and he's dealing with a guy that's physically you know stronger than him for sure, for sure, for sure, and Sean Porter, but um, you know. Bob Brown saying like he come to his senses. You know why he come to his senses? Because he don't have a dog at welterweight. He only has two dogs that we know of at welterweight. And that's Terrence Crawford and that's Constantine Pulmov. And, um, you know, Terrence Crawford must have, you know, asked him to get the, get him and gave him the marching orders to make these fights. And, um, you know, the odds are against him from running a gauntlet, you know, uh, despite what y'all fans think. Y'all think he going to move up and wait and carry his power and, and be invincible. Yeah, it's easy looking. It's easy to be the tallest midget amongst midgets. Now he's a, a he's a, a a giant amongst other giants. And um, you know, now we gonna see if we really can cut the cake. You know, uh, remember a long time one of my boys who boxes up, up in here up here in Detroit told me that um you know you know back at the thirty five the Adrian Broner story would be uh would really start kick off and be told at one hundred and forty seven pounds and um. You know, it was a perfect and right prediction. And I think the same holds true for Terrence Crawford. I see flaws in Crawford like I see flaws in other fighters. Y'all act like Crawford is walking on water. And if he gets defeated, y'all going to jump off the bandwagon and say he was overrated. No, you guys overrated him. He didn't fight anybody at 35 or 40 that has the prominence of anybody at top guys of PBC at 147. You know, I don't think he fought a guy that was more prominent than Lamont Peterson's career. You know, maybe you can make the argument for Victor Postal. Um... But I don't see anybody that he's fought that's, you know, Sean, Danny Garcia, you know, um, Keith, uh, Earl Spence. Um, you know, that's just my opinion right there, you know. Um, and and he goes to 147. He dominates 147. And, I mean, you can't say nothing else about Terrence Crawford. He goes to 
he becomes the number one guy at this welterweight division, you know, he's really entrenched and embedded and cemented in pound for pound number one. My pound for pound number one is vacant right now. Um, somebody got to go get it. And it seems like Terrence Crawford is really making the charge to go snatch that crown. And I like his mentality. And I like his chances versus everybody, to be to be honest. I like his chances. just things I need to see. I need to see if the power there. And I need to see if he's going to show up that defense, you know. That tit-for-tat thing that he does where he get hit and he want to immediately get reckless and get hit, that will get you knocked out at 147 by a number of guys, you know. It will get you knocked out. And he can't make those same mistakes. He got to shore it up. And he kind of got to change his style a little bit. You know, um, he got to become more patient. You know, he's patient once he get in the groove, but a lot of chances, a lot of times he take chances that that's not necessary. He don't need to take those chances with an Earl Spencer or Keith Thurman. And a lot of you guys wouldn't understand that because when you make a chance with those guys, one punch will put you out. And we've seen Crawford get rocked by Gamboa and a couple other times in fights. I've seen Diaz rock him. Um, and that's because he gets reckless. He leaves himself open. And that's things that can be corrected. You know, just being more patient with experience. And I think he knew he knew he can get away with that at 145, 140 and 135. At 147, I think you might see a totally different Crawford, a more patient Crawford, a more diabolical Crawford, a more surgical tactician Crawford at 147. And if that happens, I think I, I really like his chances versus anybody um, because I don't see anybody outboxing him, maybe Keith Thurman. Um, but if he got that pop, you know, I'm definitely going to favor him. But it's going to be some interesting things we're going to.